every country in the world has more or less the same traffic problems. And while the number of fatal crashes are declining, there has been a rise in other traffic-related incidents. Collisions, pedestrian injuries, car crime, congestion and pollution, all of which contribute to make road travel an increasingly dangerous and unpleasant experience. Yet, as the problem grows, so does the need for solutions. The traffic police are now using some of the most sophisticated video surveillance equipment, including helicopters, video cars and fixed roadside cameras, in order to keep a close eye on what is happening on the roads. In this programme, recordings from these cameras will provide evidence of just how carelessly many of us drive, but will also help us point out ways to improve road behaviour. Drinking and driving. Drinking and driving is not just a problem at Christmas, it is an all year round problem and we're treating it as such. We have enforcement campaigns that last all year round. Um, and the only advice really is if you're going to do some drinking, then make sure you've got someone else to do the driving. Uh, there is no safe limit. Whatever you have to drink uh, alcohol will affect your ability to drive. There's no doubt about that. And we're con very concerned because 10 people every week die on the roads through people drinking and driving. There is not a country in the world that doesn't have a drink-drive problem. But contrary to what most people think, it's actually middle-aged drivers who are breaking the drink-drive laws most frequently. Like this Swedish driver who'd had a very liquid lunch and thought no one would notice if he drove himself home to sleep it off. He ended up losing his licence for three years, once he'd sobered up in jail. A lot of states in the USA do a roadside sobriety test because the breathalyzer evidence isn't always reliable in an American court and also doesn't register if someone is on drugs, whereas video evidence shows what state the driver really was in, like the following. This driver was stopped on Boxing Day. To the right and touching the lane marker, and then you drifted off back, uh, back to the left and did the same. I was just wondering we, if there was any reasonable explanation for that. We were just. Earth, Wind, and Fire came on the radio. And it was down. Okay. All righty. I mean, I'm a license. I'm sorry. Okay. Anything to drink tonight? I've had two beers. Two yeah, beers. Okay. Beers. You don't think you don't think that's impaired your driving or anything? No, sir. I really don't. Okay. Well, like I said, uh, the speed we're kind of catching up, and then you kind of drift I, this I'm way. Sorry. Then, and just I just want to make sure you're going to be able to get your friends home, and then you're going to be able to get home. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm about two blocks away. Okay. What I'd like to do, Charles, I called him Michael, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Somebody the other time. Uh, if you wouldn't mind doing just a couple of field sobriety tests, make that's sure that, fine, that it was fine. just earth, wind, and fire and it wasn't anything else. I apologize. Can we do it? That's, you know. that's okay. I just want to make sure everything's going to be okay. okay I understand. All right? Sure. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain and demonstrate how I want you to do this, okay? And then I'll ask okay. you to perform that, okay? okay? Okay. When I tell you to begin, you can raise either leg you want, right or left, about six inches off the ground. You're going to keep your hands down to your sides. Okay. You're going to watch your foot. It's going to be like this. You're going to raise that foot. You're going to watch your foot just like that. Keep your hands out your side, and then you're going to count out loud. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, up to 1,030. So it's a 30-second test, but you're counting by thousands. Do you understand, Charles? Yeah. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and begin. 1,001. I have six inches. 1,003, 1,004, 1,028, 1,029, 1,030. Okay. All right, Charles. What I need you to do, Charles, is put your left foot out in front of you first, okay, and then put your right foot in a heel-to-toe fashion just like that right in front. Can you do that? Okay, now I need you to hold that position just for a second here, Charles, because I'm going to tell you how to walk toward that pole, okay? I'm going to tell you to be... I'm a little cold. Okay, I understand. It's, it's cold out here. It's, it's very cold. The quicker we can get done, the, the quicker we get out of here. If you need, you need to maintain that position, though, Charles. That's part of the test here, okay? Sorry, That's all right. Cold. That's all right. I know. What we're going to do is we're going to take nine heel-to-toe steps toward that, that pole, okay? So watch what I'm doing here, Charles. One, two, three, four, five, all the way to nine. Okay, now when you get to your ninth step, Charles, I need you to turn around and come back. Here's, okay. You understand? Okay, yes. hands down to your side. The driver was arrested for drink driving and lost his license for a year. Okay. Christmas. It's not only the police who are looking out for drunk drivers. This citizen is a video vigilante who calls the police when he comes across drunks on the road and when he has to, he makes a citizen's arrest to stop the driver getting away. Turn the scanner all the way down. Okay. 
Okay, he's gonna go east. east. Yeah, hard he's going over into Dell City's turn. And I need an officer. With the 7 uh, Tinker Diagonal. Seven in front of the 7 Eleven. He's gonna. He's, into the 7 he's gonna turn into the 7 Eleven, and I'm gonna make a citizen's arrest if you can get me an officer up here. Okay, is, uh, is Bobby working? Okay. Hand me the camera. Young Tom Ida, 810, Silver Camaro. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't move again. Do you understand? Not moving. I'm not moving. Okay, do you understand that I've placed you under arrest for suspicion of driving under the influence? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't move again. Not okay, don't even try to get off and walk away. Not. Not. Sir! Come on, man. Lean over the trunk, keep your face down. The Danish traffic police followed this character for a while, thinking he was just mucking around. truck had to brake hard to avoid him. Then they decided it was time to pull him over. The police then noticed the beer bottle in his hand. In fact, he was so drunk he couldn't stand up and fell off his bike when he was stopped. But he didn't spill a drop of his beer. Make way for emergency vehicles. OK, we've got a roundabout here where I'm going to go uh, right. Mirrors. The police driver training teaches drivers to be able to do a running commentary like this. Start to pick up the drive. We can make a little bit of progress in a roundabout. The road surface is quite good. Red one's uh, made the right decision by pulling over. Offside mirror, position towards the middle of the roundabout. Near side mirror. The grey one's going the same way that we are and there's nowhere really for her to stop. She's doing her best. So uh, as long as she is thinking about what she's doing, that's no problem. Mirror's back on the drive again. These vehicles don't have to stop exactly where they are. They can draw along the road a little bit further until the road is wide enough and safe enough to pull over for us. Um, on mirrors, cover the brakes because of the one coming from the right-hand side. Feathering off on the brakes, that sort of thing is a little bit um, short-sighted of drivers when they pull out in front of a vehicle that's got its headlights on, the two tones and the blue lights going as well. Um, we don't exactly blend with the background in this vehicle at the moment. Near side if mirror, people hear an emergency vehicle coming along behind them, then the first thing we would say is look in your mirror, find out where it is, and assess where he's going to be. And the second thing is act very clearly. Um, we don't want you pulling into the path of the, motor, the car. He should be indicating to you uh, which way he wants to go. This red one doesn't actually know that I'm here because he's still going quite quick, and that's making it a little bit awkward for me to get through. Mirrors, gentle brakes, a little bit firmer. And the first reaction that he's done there is to brake. If it had done that further back along the road when there was nobody else, it would have made it a little bit easier for me, but instead he did it right at the point where there were oncoming vehicles and made it a little bit awkward. Going right at the roundabout, mirror signal, gentle brakes, a little bit firmer on the braking. Bearing in mind that all the police driver needs is a little bit more space. If the public can do that without causing danger to themselves or too much inconvenience, then, uh, then by all means uh, stop. But by looking further ahead, they may find uh, a more appropriate place to pull over and stop, thereby allowing us to overtake uh, a little bit more safely, if you like. 
Now, bearing in mind the warning equipment that I've got on the vehicle doesn't actually say to people, pull over. I'm not saying to them, get out of my way. I'm just saying I'm here. Um, if you can, then make it a little bit easier for me to get through. Mirrors back on the drive, firm acceleration. There's one on the right hand side. There's vehicles coming in from the left as well. Some drivers don't hear sirens because of loud music. This guy did notice the police eventually, but was too stoned to realize that they were meant for him, so he didn't stop. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was a cop car, quite honestly. I really? That was something. Okay. I've never seen that many lights in a cop car before. Well, I, I, you know, I tried to you know, signal you to stop, and we had the siren on for quite a while. We went probably about a mile and a half without the uh, I thought it was a siren. joke, quite honestly. A joke? I, I didn't know what was going on okay. there. Okay. I've never seen that many lights. And sometimes traffic cars don't need sirens at all to catch stupid driving. Okay, we get a lot of complaints about people driving recklessly and speeding and drag racing around and stuff like that. And it's real rare that you actually catch them in the act. Uh, tonight we came up behind this guy and obviously he was driving and not paying a whole lot of attention to what he was doing because he didn't notice that there's a squad car parked right behind him as he decided to uh, do a brake stand at this intersection uh, and just smoke his tires all the way through it. Uh, relatively very dangerous kind of act. Uh, as you can see from the cloud of smoke that he left uh, driving through it, you couldn't see anything. Uh, it would have been real easy for an accident to be caused by people driving like that. Do you have any tires left on this thing after that with a show? I've got tires left. Uh, you know, if I don't have to go to court, so you just lose them or? Yeah. Or you can pay it in person over there in a couple days and get your license back on the spot. Well, it won't be a couple of days. It'll be a little longer than that. But okay, well, before the court date sometime. Good. Yeah, and you're down just about legal tread depth on that right side tire. Okay. From what you All right, did thank there. you. Right, sir, Sorry about that. Hey, if I'd have seen you coming, I'd have known better. Well, <laughs> I would sure hope so. Christmas time pursuit. The main reason behind uh, the, the training of police officers in uh, pursuit training is in order for the police officer to always remain in control regardless of what uh, the vehicle that they're pursuing is doing. Uh, bearing in mind there's many reasons for uh, individuals trying to escape uh, from police uh, and we don't always know that when we partake in the chase so the idea behind the chase is actually to pursue the vehicle um, as safely as possible. This is a stolen car that had been spotted by the police on the streets of Copenhagen. It was caught up in a traffic jam caused by a children's Christmas parade. The car took off straight through the parade, luckily causing no injuries. It smashes into the car waiting at the lights, but doesn't pause, despite the damage to the vehicle. For some odd reason, he signals his turn here.
This thief hasn't driven since. He's in jail. Let's watch again, as this man is very nearly run down as he rushes out to see what was happening. Madmen and cowboys. The video camera evidence isn't always used just to prosecute drivers. Sometimes their passengers do crazy or stupid things, like the following. The surfer was shouting to the driver to stop, I'm falling off. A busy motorway is no place for someone with mental problems. Watch as an off-duty police officer driving the white car puts his arm out of his window and grabs him. It's insane and also illegal to be on the motorway like this. Where these guys think they were going is what the traffic police asked when they put them into the back of their patrol car. At least this poor animal did not want to be on the motorway. It had escaped from a truck involved in this crash. Speeding motorists seemed very slow to notice the animal. The man playing cowboy here tries an unusual technique of staring the cow in the eye. The cow turns and runs. This trucker makes a mess of it because the cow squeezes through the gap between his bumper and the crash barrier. Truck drivers. There are an ever-increasing amount of trucks vying with cars for space on the roads. But even experienced truck drivers make mistakes. Lots of mistakes. Two men stole this beer truck and its load but were quickly found and pursued. Over a dozen police cars were called into the pursuit, which reached speeds of over 90 kilometers an hour, and came to an end when the truck tried to do a U-turn on the motorway and stalled. This driver was either going too fast or was badly loaded. It's surprisingly easy to turn a truck over. This driver was suspected of having dozed off. He hit the barrier and flipped over. The wreck caused havoc on the M1 and took hours to clear. This driver didn't notice the width restriction sign. When he tried to make a U-turn because of the barrier in the road, he got the truck wedged between two trees. The police had to cut one of the trees down to get the truck out. And as if you hadn't guessed, yes, 
one of the clowns was driving. But drivers not reading signs leads to all sorts of problems. Like getting stuck under bridges. This vehicle is so close to the car's rear bumper, you can hardly see the car. Dangerous or what? This driver took off after a minor traffic violation. The pursuit lasted over two hours through Hollywood, Beverly Hills and ending up in San Pedro. And most of the time, with a screeching bare wheel rim because the tire had been shot out. The pursuit was closely followed by at least eight news and two police helicopters, as well as numerous patrol cars. Eventually, police nudged him into the wall and arrested him. Coaches. Like a large truck, a speeding coach can be very intimidating. This coach driver forgot he wasn't driving a car. And the passengers on this Dutch bus got a shock when the driver braked too hard, trying to stop at the lights. On average, 10 accidents a week occur when buses, trucks, skip lorries and even caravans are involved in accidents with low bridges. Railtrack decided to crash this bus to raise awareness of the problem and to get drivers to firstly make sure they know the height and width of their vehicles before setting out and secondly to get drivers to look out for advance warning signs. These children were captured by an onboard video camera from the front of this school bus. The driver had just suffered a seizure and had collapsed unconscious, but with his foot still on the accelerator pedal. The student here realised something was wrong and made his way to the front. As he reached the driver, the speeding bus hit a rickety bridge, tossing one child up into the air out of his seat. The student pulled the driver's foot off the pedal and then using his hands, he hit the brake, bringing the bus to a stop. The bus had been heading for the water, but miraculously swung back onto the bridge before stopping. Luckily, none of the children were seriously hurt, including the child who went flying. Strange loads. If you can't see clearly where you are going or have objects sticking out of your vehicle, you are driving dangerously. Watch out for the two police officers on the pavement. Luckily, the guttering sticking out of this car window didn't hit them, because if it had, they'd have been gutted. But you will be stopped and fined if your load is unsafe to other members of the public. The police were puzzled as to how this driver had managed to get himself into the car with all the carpet, let alone drive it. He was fined for dangerous driving. This driver was also stopped and fined. This Danish hay lorry should not have been travelling with a broken rear suspension. and it shouldn't have cut the corner like this, either. Oh, 
This overladen trailer breaks slightly on the corner because a motorcycle is pulled out on them. Stress and aggression. We recognise that people do get bad tempered when they're driving. The conditions of the road sometimes make it like that, the congestion, um, bad driving, uh, bad feelings about drivers. Um, but at all costs, don't get involved in confrontation. If you can, avoid the eye contact, don't get into an argument, don't try outmanoeuvring each other. It doesn't work. The most sensible thing is keep your cool and, and just keep to your driving plan and avoid that confrontation. Confrontations on the road are rarely videoed, but here is the first ever clip of actual road rage. It's very short, but what you're witnessing is a male driver being given a good whacking by an irate female driver. A survey was taken on what annoyed motorists most. The following are the 10 driving habits that really get drivers into a rage. Number one is the tailgater. Tailgating someone like this is aggressive driving. It's totally unnecessary and it's very dangerous. If you tailgate someone at speed, you could accidentally nudge their tail and spin them into a crash. Like in this clip. The offender didn't even stop. Number two, the no ways, the drivers who will not let you in. Although it's understandable in this case. Number three, the road work cutters, the drivers who leave it until the very last moment before pushing into the queue. Number four, the middle of the road hogs, sometimes forcing people to undertake. Five, mobile phone users who are not concentrating on the road. If someone cuts you up, you can bet it's because they're on the phone. Excuse me, sir. Can you drop forward off of the crossing and park on the left, please? Six, the swearers and the rude hand signal aggressors, the don't mess with me approach that we can all live without. Number seven, the swoopers, who hang out in the outside lane until the last moment before turning off. Shit, eh? Number eight, the car park space stealers. What's the point of upsetting people over a bit of space? There's nearly always another spot around the corner. Number nine, the non-indicators who are either lazy or think other motorists are telepathic. Finally, 10, the rubberneckers. However tempted you might be to see what happened, don't. You could easily cause someone to crash into you. So that's it, the top 10 hates. We all commit them, and if we didn't, what a better driving environment we would have. 
Ignite pursuit. This is one of the fastest ever recorded pursuits in Sweden. He reached speeds of nearly 127 miles per hour. The driver lost control and demolished a lamppost. He then did a runner, but he was soon caught by a police dog as he tried to hide in the woods. Driving and fatigue. Drivers do get tired. We recognise as they're driving along, um, inevitably fatigue builds up. The first thing is you should be stopping quite regularly, every two hours, I would say, um, to have a break. Get a break away from, get out the vehicle, get some fresh air. Uh, possibly get a cup of coffee. Um, avoid alcohol, of course, we would say that anyway, but that could be a contributory factor. Don't have the car too hot. Get some fresh air in the car. Get fresh air on your face. It is believed that 20% of all accidents are caused by driver fatigue. And if you cause an accident because you dozed off to sleep, you will be charged with dangerous driving. So if you feel like you are getting tired while travelling, please stop and take a break. Refuel your body as well as your car. Plan a meal break on a long journey. But please, don't stop where this chap did. The hard shoulder. The hard shoulders of motorways are dangerous places. People don't realise this. 20% of all our motorway accidents occur on the hard shoulder. So if you do have to stop, and I would say you have to, you shouldn't be stopping for any other reason than an emergency. You should pull right over to the left-hand side, get as far off the motorway as you can, um, and then put your hazard lights on. And then, once you've told the police you're there, um, get out of the car, leave the door open, and get and stand up on the bank if you can, or sit there. If you get worried, then get back in the car, but stay on the near side of the car, away from the danger. Because the danger is that people will be coming along behind you and may drift onto the hard shoulder without realising it and run in the back. And the, the consequences are very serious. In relation to stopping on motorways, uh, the hard shoulder is not a lay-by. The hard shoulder is purely and simply a place where vehicles can pull over in an emergency. And it has to be an emergency. Um, I don't like being on the hard shoulder of a motorway with a vehicle that's marked up with police on the side and blue lights on the top in order to make myself a little bit more visible. So I certainly wouldn't pull over on the hard shoulder of a motorway unless it was an emergency. Drivers like this make hard shoulders especially lethal. This people carrier was speeding up the hard shoulder when the driver of the brown car took a fence and blocked him. What follows is classic road rage stupidity. Watch here as he tries to block off the brown car in revenge. Boys, 
The Yellow Box Junction. For many years, we've had yellow hatch markings at junctions. The purpose of those markings is to keep the junction clear, so that when the traffic um, moves off, it can clear the junction. For some time, we've treated those fairly light-hearted and haven't really rigorously enforced them. But we've realised that the cause of congestion in London is largely due to people not being able to clear intersections. So we're becoming more rigorous in enforcing those junctions now. And we've got new technology with cameras that will film people stopping in the junction and when they're caught there, trapped and blocking the junction, we've got them on film and they're the ones that are going to finish up in court. They're the ones that are causing all the congestion in London. Recently, the law was changed to allow us to use video evidence at court prima facie. We have about 200 cameras, in, mostly in central London, that are on very tall poles or on buildings and the company that manufactures the traffic systems put forward an idea that we could run an experiment on a main road and they chose the Malibu Road. We chose three cameras to work at three different junctions to see if we could monitor yellow box offences using CCTV. One point that has become very apparent, particularly with the banned left and right turners, is the incidence of repeat offenders. Uh, particular drivers, the same time of day, one person I caught on five consecutive mornings. Um, obviously, they now no longer uh, commit that offence because they've uh, received five £20 tickets and they're not happy to receive any more. The banning of the left and right turns in the main road um, is very important. Something that I hadn't seen when I first started to conduct the experiment was I was concentrating on the vehicle committing the offence. It's only with experience that I was then watching off the shot and could see that the danger was being caused to people crossing the road. The reason the ban turn had been put in was to give the pedestrians a phase of lights in order to cross the road. The pedestrians, particularly those coming out of Great Portland Street, would look up and they would get a green man and start to cross. But of course the people who were then committing the offence would be uh, almost in a position to run them over. Pick up pursuit. This stolen Danish pickup truck is being driven by a 21-year-old who has already been convicted for stealing 80 vehicles. He has no license, no insurance and nowhere to go. Here, he is nearly headed off but manages to squeeze through. The police block him. But just as they thought that they had him, he pushes his way out, but loses control of the vehicle and runs out of road. In the end, he had damaged five police vehicles and one police bike. Drink, drive. People don't realise what they're going to go through if they get caught drinking and driving. They'll be arrested, they'll be breath tested, they'll be taken to the police station, they go through a procedure there where they're breath tested again, and then possibly put in a cell while we make inquiries. Um, then they go to court. 
then they can lose their license for a minimum of one year. They'll be fined up to a five thousand pounds. They could even go to prison for six months. But the consequences continue on. More difficult to get car insurance. They may lose their job because they can't drive to work. Um, and so the, the family may suffer because they haven't got anybody to run them around. So the consequences go on and on. So drinking and driving really does wreck lives. It is not simply a few drinks one night and forget about it. So you've got to really think about um, this. And if you're going to be drinking, then make sure you're not driving. Because otherwise, you can wreck your life and other people's as well. When I tell you to begin, sir, I want you to raise either leg, whichever one you feel comfortable with, about six inches off the ground, just like this, sir. Hang on. Hang on, Mr. Paul. Hang on. Hang now, on. I'll tell you what. Hang on. Hang on. Here. Uh, that, that really wasn't the way I want you to do it, so the way I'm going to ask you, it might be a little bit easier, okay? Mr. Now, we don't have any lines out here other than this crack in the road, and I don't want to have you walk on a crack, okay? So if I was sober and I was trying to stand like mm -hmm. that. Okay. One more. Okay. Okay. One more. You're. Okay. You're okay. the boss. Okay. I'm well, sorry. I'm not the boss. I, I yes, found. You are, I, I you found are that the out. Boss right okay. Now. Stand. I can walk for a short duration. Could you walk for nine steps? Sure. Okay. I'll tell you what. I need you to come right over here. Okay. Come right over here. Turn around. Whoops. 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 Turn around. Face the camera. What I want you to do is when I tell you to, just stand right there like that. Do your shoes cause any problems? Anything else? Yes. The shoes are very overweight. The shoes are very overweight. No, no, no. no just stand. Just stand like I'm doing. Just like this. Whoops. Stay. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want to take your shoes off? Okay. Okay. Need some help out? Okay. Right well, I wanted to get your keys, okay? Do you think you can stand with one foot off the ground like this? Here, whoop, 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 whoop. It's not moving much for anyone. Can you think you can stand with one foot off the ground like this? Sure. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Okay, go ahead and try it one more time. Okay. Do you think that the amount of alcohol that you've had tonight has impaired your ability to drive to any degree? No. No? What time did you start drinking tonight? Have you had anything to drink tonight? Yeah, I've had a couple beers. A couple of beers? Okay, you don't think you're impaired or anything, do you? No. Like I said, the, 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 the way you made that turn or whatever, yeah, that, that, that made me a little bit I, nervous. Well, that's because I was taking directions. I oh, pick the navigator did that to you then? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's like, this is Neal Street, you got to turn. And I looked to check and make sure there wasn't no traffic. Okay. I was coming up there or whatever, and the, the quick lane change or whatever, mm -hmm. although, you know, I saw it or whatever, sometimes people are just be bopping down right. the road and somebody comes over without oh, saying like sure. that kind of makes them nervous. Well, Michael, um, I'm just, you know, at a Christmas party, I'll admit, I had a couple drinks. Okay. Are you going I'm home staying, now? Or? No, I'm staying town tonight. My boss bought me a hotel room. Like I said, I just went to pick up my girlfriend. Okay. All right. So at this point, you're under arrest for driving under the influence of alcohol, okay? Right. These handcuffs are nothing personal, Michael. It's just a matter of procedure. And uh, it's nothing personal. Like I said, you've been very cooperative. Hang on just a second. Let, let, hang on. Just, you don't have any knives, guns, uh, nuclear devices, or anything like that, do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's what's this? Hang on a second. This is a one hitter? Yeah. Okay. How much do you get? You got anything else on you? Yeah. You got your uh, yeah. you got you got one right here? Yep. Yeah. You got a joint in your pocket here? Be honest with me now, Michael. Because if you got it, I'm going to find it, so be honest with me. That's okay. Little bit of coke. All right. Well, I'm at a Christmas party. Can't you give me a break? Well, I understand you're at a Christmas party, Michael. I just, I just, uh, I just believe you're under the influence, Michael. Like I said, there's nothing personal. How about if I have her drive? Well, drive. The, the deal My is. My boss has got me a room here tonight. Okay, I understand in. that. I understand that, Michael. Problem is that you already made a driving maneuver, which was somewhat unsafe. We need to go to the car over here, okay? The police were following this driver. They suspected he was drunk. They were right. It's well to remember that the police will usually breathalyze all car drivers involved in an accident, even when it's quite obvious who caused it. Oh, 